pleasure to introduce the next keynote speaker of the day. From the halls of Mary Hogue Middle School, she's the poster child for 21st century learning. Please welcome Kayla Saldana. Thank you. This is truly an entrance fit for a rock star. <laughs> Hi again. My name is Kayla Salania, and I passed through seventh grade, regardless of the more rigorous star test. <laughs> Come on, people, show me some love. There you go. <clears throat> and why? Because you prepared me for it the right way. Yeah, my parents made me go to bed earlier, and I had a great breakfast those mornings. But you worked with me all year long, every day. And this idea of learning 24-7, anytime, anywhere, that this man sitting up here on the stage introduced <laughs> us to last year, well, it worked for me. And it worked for a huge amount of our students here in Westlaco, putting us among the top three 5A school districts in the Valley with the highest passing scores. I want to thank you for giving me another opportunity to talk to you again. I love this mic and I love this stage. <laughs> and I mostly like that my message is, in a lot of ways, what many of my peers wish they could say to a group of teachers and staff like you. If they want to call me the poster child for 21st century learning, then I get to speak for all 18,000 WISD students. And I am up for that. That's the best part of being a kid. I can get away with saying some pretty straightforward stuff. And now that I have control of the mic, I've been wanting to try something that can only be done with this kind of crowd. Let's make some rain, then some thunder. Each section of the auditorium is going to make a different sound. First, my far right side will start by taking your hands and rubbing them against each other, like this. Then, this next section right here will snap your fingers. Some of you that can snap louder can snap slower, and the others can go at all different speeds, like this. The next section right here will slap your hands on your lap, like this. Also some louder than others and at different speeds. And last but not least, my far left section, and us here up on the stage, will stomp our feet on the floor twice, real hard, then fade softly, like this. <laughs> so when I point to you in the left section and the stage, that would be your cue to stomp loudly, okay? 
Is everybody ready? ready? Tim Smith only gave us two seconds of rain. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, ready guys? Ready. One, two, three. Next section. Keep going together, guys. Next section. Okay, one, two, three. That was amazing. Let's do it again, let's do it again. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? One, two, three. Next section. Next section. Oh, you guys already know. Good job. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. That was amazing. Give yourself a round of applause. This has nothing to do with my message. <laughs> it's called an icebreaker. Really meant for me to get warmed up and to get all the butterflies out early. Thank you for your participation and principles. Feel free to use this when your staff development sessions need a little pick-me-up. <laughs> Let's get serious now. I really have to have my head attached to my shoulders tight enough to keep from spinning around so much. Every time I turn around, there's something new, improved, and then quickly obsolete. Technology is moving at a faster pace than most of us can keep up with. And even as a child, I tend to feel this sense of urgency about my future. I'm a lot excited, but a lot scared too. I have no idea what my future holds for me, or if the career I prefer now will even exist when I finish college. There's a lot to think about for us kids that's really hard to enjoy just being a kid. When I watch the news, I hear a lot about global warming and record-setting temperatures. It's either really, really hot or super cold. And how our economy is just now recovering from a near recession. My own parents work really hard just to keep a roof over our heads and feed and clothe us. So everything that I hear about on the news, I can see in my own home. I'll gain a lot of my life, life lessons from my parents, but I'll also learn so much of what life is about from you. Just take a minute to look at your hands, feel inside your hearts, and think about your capacity to teach me. With all those tools, you are the ones responsible for me which leads me to the main point of my message today. This is very personal to me, so I want to be able to see you face to face. The time is now. Let me say that again. The time is right now. This is not practice for me. I only want to be in seventh grade once in my life. I love all my teachers, but at the end of the year, I've got to move on. <laughs> and let you all go and start the next chapter in my life. And those of you who see my name in your class roster in the seventh grade at Mayhog Middle School, you need to be ready for me. At the beginning of this convocation, we introduced each of the teachers of the year from each campus, and we cheered for you all. Since we only picked one per campus and then two to represent our district, a lot of my teachers weren't selected as teachers of the year. But that shouldn't matter, because I need you to be my teacher of the year every day. I can't give you an impressive trophy or put your picture up on the billboard at the stadium. But I can give you my deepest respect, my admiration, 
and a kind of gratitude that will inspire me for the rest of my life. That has to be enough for you. Sometimes we might not acknowledge it or even say thank you. But we do notice those things and make a huge impact in our lives. I know you're not doing this job for the money. <laughs> and if it's just for your Christmas and summer vacations, <laughs> well, you need to evaluate your priority in life. <laughs> because I'm what's at stake here. Me and 18,000 more just like me. Your decision to teach has to be about me, not about you. You are my teacher today and to 18,000 more of us in this growing school district of West Laco. And I need you to be your very best today. You can't think that if you fail me today as a student that someone else will recover and pick up the pieces tomorrow. I can't be the one that falls through the cracks, the one who loses my way and loses interest in school. I want you to watch this commercial that's on TV so you can see the person that I want to be, so you can see the person that the future job market would demand me to be. I'm not advocating the product or the brand, but I am advocating the message. The commercial is called, Things Can Always Be Better. Let's watch. At Honda, we know some people are never happy with the way things are. And are always dreaming of the way they could be. Smarter. Faster. Simpler. Better. What if it had a thing for that? that for this, or could do what this one doesn't. And they make it that way. Because while the old one was good, things can always be better. We like those people. They think like us. Stop it right there. What's the last thing they said? Did anybody catch <laughs> We like those people. They think like us. We like those people. They think like us. I want them to be talking about me. I want that to be me when I grow up. A person that always wants to make things better for me and for everyone else. You all don't have to look very far to see that technology is changing the way we live, the way we think. And because it's changing so quickly, it's making it so we can't have a clear picture of what our future is going to look like. This man sitting up here, <laughs> he's on to something. 21st century learning, concepts like adaptability. I call that survival. If I can't adapt to changing trends, then I will fail in life and will not be able to support myself and my family adequately. Communication skills. I think of it this way. Will I be able to have my thoughts and ideas created up here, come out of here, and make sense all at the same time? It will do me no good to have all this knowledge stored up here if I can't communicate them to someone that can use and appreciate what I've learned. Collaboration. I can barely spell the word. <laughs> but it means that I can't always be the center of attention. You giggle now. <laughs> but you younger teachers that are just starting out during your career here in Westlaco, if I decide to come back as a teacher, and then I'm an administrator, I might be your boss one day. <laughs> and you will have to collaborate <laughs> with me. And if you didn't teach me right, then it's payback time. <laughs>
problem solving is my favorite and the one that scares me the most. It's my favorite because it forces me to use all of my skills at the same time. And it's at the root of our survival skills for my future. I've learned from enough of you out there that this life will bring its own share of problems. I follow some of you on Facebook and talk about drama. <laughs> but despite the problems that will come, I'm learning that I can solve a lot of them by just preparing now. I can eliminate poverty from my life if I become educated and develop a skill that will keep me employed. I can eliminate health issues if I eat right and be actively engaged in physical and spiritual activities that motivate me. There are already things working beyond my control. You see, I've been growing up with a condition called osteochondromas. That means bones in my body are growing in ways that they shouldn't. And about once a year, as my body grows, I have to be hospitalized to have doctors shave off parts that aren't supposed to be there. So you see, even without doing anything, life brings its own challenges. So why should we create more for ourselves by not doing the right thing now? There's one more thing I can do. I could start a tradition in my family to ensure that we all get high school and college educations. I can make sure that everyone I touch or that enters into my life, that I can inspire to greatness. That means less people in our jail systems, less people relying on government support, and more people contributing positively to our culture and economy around us. Ladies and gentlemen, these are my training grounds in your classrooms. That's really why today is so important to me. This is my preparation. This is where I get my start and create my advantages in life. I need to matter to you. I need my life to count. There's so many of us that only have this, this experience with you. Some of you teachers have as many as 100 students each school year that you can inspire. And sure, you have us establish a goal to continue on to college. But reality is, many of us won't. A few of us won't even graduate high school because we think that we can make it without a formal education. That's where your persistence needs to be non-stop. You know better than we do. And you have to keep telling us that the only way to a better life is to develop these 21st century skills and get educated. I'm curious, how many of you went to high school together? How many of you can look across the room and see your former high school classmates? Let's see, show of hands. Wow, that's a lot of you. <laughs> what I find interesting is that to a certain degree, you all started out from the same place and can see how life turned out for you and your classmates. There are principals, bus drivers, office clerks, executive directors, teachers, and yard crews all here in the same room. You're a perfect example of how our economy works. Some of you are leaders. You are decision makers. You implement your ideas and other people under your supervision carry your ideas out for you. What I'm saying is that some of you went to college and some of you didn't. And the decisions you made earlier in your life have now become evident in your futures. That's going to happen to my generation of students too. The fascinating thing is that it takes all of you to create the perfect learning environment for me. 
Some of you might make more money than the other, but neither of you are more important than the other, at least not to me. Last year I told you about my bus driver, Philip. That's him in the picture behind me. And this is Hector. You have no idea how much I look forward to seeing him after being in the classroom for hours with my stomach growling. And this is my CTC at Mary Hogue. <laughs> when technical problems happen, he's like Superman to the rescue. My point is this. that all the people that work in my school and in this district hold some of the most honorable jobs and positions in our country. Educating our nation's youth is no small task. But each of you, regardless of the value of your position, earn more or less than the one sitting right next to you. And that's mostly because of the choices you made when you were young like me. And when life's problems occur, some of you have better resources to handle those life's problems than others. No, money isn't everything, and nor does it ensure happiness. But an education and a well-paying position does offer financial security, opportunity, and hope. We kids don't see it all that clearly yet. But depending on our age, we will eventually get hit by our own reality and realize that we won't always be under our parents' wings. That's, again, why today is so important to us. The time is now, people. N-O-W, now. Our leaders at the Capitol seem to forget how important now is. The only now they know is the financial crisis they put themselves in, and they're now taking part of our school funding away. You educators are being asked to do more with less, or even to do more with nothing. A lot of you teachers spend money from your own pockets, just provide enhanced learning opportunities for us. To decorate your classroom or buy us pizza when we have to stay after school to practice UIL events. You go above and beyond every single day for us. And that really does matter to me and to my friends. It really does matter to us. And that's exactly what we need. Remember what I said before? This is not practice for me. Today is it. The time is now. Right now. I need you now. We students need you now. Let me ask you this. Do you believe in me? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. Do you believe in my potential? Yes. Louder. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Do you believe in your power to help me realize my full potential? Yes. Does it matter if I'm growing up in the colonias of North Westlaco? No. It better not. <laughs> Does it matter if I'm from Eastside Strongside or the Westlaco Panthers? The morning group said yes. <laughs> I need you to see me as a world changer and not categorize me by where I live or how I live. My tomorrow needs to be your today. You are creating tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's world changers. But it all starts right here, right now. Let me hear a big amen from my campus, Mary Hogue. Amen. Come on, guys, show, us, show them your best. Come on, louder. Amen. And what do you say to that central regards in Cuellar? 
Nothing? Are you serious? Wow, I see how it is. Then. Are you all excited about this school year? Yes! Are you ready for me and my 18,000 classmates? Yes! You better be. Did you get enough West in the summer? Well, wake up! Guys, take off your white beater t-shirts and put on your ties. <laughs> Ladies, take off your child class and put those high heels back on. Cuz we're back. We love you. We need you. You complete me. Thank you, Alice. Have a great school year. I love you. Bye. One more thing. I hope you're ready for me.